So finances yes. is everything. Uh, so when you came out of college, you went to work for uh, someone, right? Yes. So yes. what was that point where you said, okay, uh, I think uh, I should start my own? Yeah, I, I was a slow learner. Okay. And so it, it was probably 10 to 12 years of working for others. And honestly, it, it was a good 10 or 12 years to really learn lessons, you know, through that process. I did some accounting. I did some IT management as part of my roles. And my last job before launching Fulling Management was a consultant at a CPA firm. And so I really got to see the value of the dollars and cents on a piece of paper. And, and it was really a little bit heartbreaking when you hand a business owner a financial statement and they look at it and they're confused. And so they just file it over here in the trash can because there's no value in it. And, and so when we launched Fulling Management and Accounting, it was how can we help business owners make sense of their numbers and really help guide them to their intended journey? And so we almost correlate it to a CF, having a good CFO is like having a good GPS system. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So what made you go and start on your own? Is that when you created all those intuitive dashboards that oh. tell you in the reporting while you were doing consulting and working those 10, 12 years? Yeah, those 10 or 12 years, I think, gave some cadence or some education, I would say, on the job education towards hey, what is important and what would make sense. And so when we launched, it was like, my goodness, you know, here's the things that are really important. And so we didn't launch with grandiose plans of a thousand clients. Our goal was to have five to 10 clients in our first year, you know, just because we wanted to go deep. We wanted to make an impact on those clients and watch them grow. And what's neat is, one of those clients that we started with almost 25 years ago are now one of our biggest clients today. Interesting. So you grew with them. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So when you started, you uh, mentioned a couple of times now, we. So you yeah. were not alone when you initiated? Probably the wisest decision I made was to not start alone. And I actually brought on another gentleman as a bookkeeper at the time to help do all our sales. And I was going to do the bookkeeping. And somewhere along the line, we figured out we we're in the wrong seats. And he got to do really what he was good at, bookkeeping and accounting. And I got to go out and really get into the business development side. And we just leaned into really what we were good at. And so, but yeah, that definitely, I'd say it can be lonely when you start out as a solopreneur. And I don't know if it was by mistake or just good luck, but there was at least a little bit of wherewithal to say, you know what, maybe I should have somebody else join me in this process. You started in 2000. That's correct. And so I looked at the, your team. You have a good sized team already. So how that the transition worked out for you? How did you position yourself in sales and then started to bring mm. controllers, other yeah. accountants? Like wh what led yeah. you to start hiring? Yes, it took about 12 years. So it was really a slow process. I think it, it was about year 12 when, honestly, I was a little bit burned out. And for entrepreneurs, you know, that, that can be a common theme. You're just doing everything. And I think it was year 12, honestly, that, that was when vision, when I finally said, oh, what's the vision of the company? And I was just challenged with that as far as, hey, if this is a real company, it needs to have a vision for the future. And so you could almost see if you were to look at a, a growth pattern, you could almost see that was the kind of the tipping point of our business when we really started saying, hey, three years from now, here's where we want to be. And so ever since that time, like I said, almost, boy, almost 13 years ago, we've always cast at least a three-year vision to say, here's where we're heading. And what's neat is, is you just get people on board with that and they buy into that. And when you talk about, did I go into sales and some, honestly, I don't know that I've, I've ever been in sales so much as it's just service. And if you really serve people well, that becomes your sales strategy. Give value. 